are 254 town meeting members, 128 constitute a quorum. We're going to debate and we'll eventually come to vote. So I ask you to support this motion. I see no hands. Am I missing one? Need the community these bring together. I was an elementary school teacher. I, I think that we're hearing two separate issues. Public art's been an important part of this community. I urge you to vote yes on this proposal. Call the previous question. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, please say no. No. We'll have an electronic vote. I move to adjourn. We are adjourned. My name is Carol Gray and welcome to Conversations About Town Meeting. Uh, Amherst Town Meeting was first started in March 19th, 1759. It was, um, Town Meeting governed the town for 359 years and this is actually the first segment that we're filming after the vote that uh, converted our governance from Town Meeting to a Town Council form of government. So, uh, and this article that we're going to be talking about was actually the last article on the warrant for what could be the last town meeting ever in Amherst. Uh, there could be a fall town meeting, but we're not sure. But in any event, we're very happy to be here with uh, the seventh grade class members who are part of an organization that brought a town meeting article on climate change, a resolution that passed unanimously in town meeting. and. I'm going, going to let the students introduce themselves and then we're going to hear more about why they brought this resolution and what it was like to s be part of our town government in action. Uh, so if you could please go one by one and introduce yourselves and uh, also say what, what grade you're in and how old you are. Um, I'm Lucy Smith. I'm in seventh grade and I'm 13. I'm Tessa Kaywall. I'm in seventh grade and I'm 13. I'm Jaden Case. I'm in seventh grade and I'm 13. I'm Anna Gilsdorf. I'm in seventh grade and I'm also 13. Okay. Well, okay, great. Now, you were part of this organization called TJ Talk, and I'm going to let uh, one of you explain what that is. Uh, who was part of forming that, that name? Uh, well, well let's, let's, let's let, uh, would you like to get started? Um, uh, Anna, where do we start that in? Were you part of the forming of the name? No, I think my friend Sam chose the name because he liked the way it sounded and he liked the acronym provided by it, which is T-J-T-O-C-C-C. -C -C. And um, Jaden, could you mention what does the acronym stand for? Um, it stands for Team Jaguar Takes on Climate Change Committee. Okay, great. Um, so um, I'd like to hear from each of you about um, why you got involved with this and maybe what part of this whole process you were part of. Um, so, um, uh, Lucy, do you want to kind of start? Well, I got involved with this because we were learning about it in social studies and I realized that how big of a problem climate change was and I worked on the slideshows a lot. Terrific, great. And uh, Tessa? Um, well, when we heard about it in social studies, and we were asked to do a project, I immediately knew that I like wanted to do something big and I needed to make an impact. Um, so why not go big, right? So yeah, and, and what part of the petition process did you get involved I with? I was sort of the secretary. Like I made the phone calls, took notes. Okay, okay. So who did you call? Uh, town manager, town clerk, people like that, asking them questions like in preparation for town meeting usually. But what kinds of questions were there that you came up with? Um, mostly for town meeting, it was about where we would sit, exactly how it goes, when we would need to turn in the presentation by, who's talking, things like that. I see. Okay, great. And uh, Jaden, <coughs> what, what part of the process were you involved with? Um, so the first thing that I did was I was in charge of making the brochure, which gives the rundown on like what exactly like our warrant article is about and like how climate change affects Amherst. Great. So this brochure was very impressive. It was a 
we're, we're going to show it um, on air here, so we're going to show that right now. And could you talk about the different panels that you saw that you, that you put together? Actually, I have a copy, but I'm sure you remember it. So, yeah. so maybe you could discuss each panel. What, how did you, did you come up with those ideas, and what's your favorite part of it? So um, I was working on it with two other people, and we thought, like, well, if you're sitting at town meeting, what do you want people to know about us? So, like, we had a whole panel, like, who are we? It was, like, how we're a group of seven we created at arms and what we're trying to do. And then we also have, like, facts about climate change, which we thought were going to be, like, we hoped that would affect people's decisions, like, to give them a couple facts about, like, how it's affecting the world. And then since this article is about the Paris Climate Agreement, we had what is the Paris Climate Agreement panel. And, and what is it? Maybe you could elaborate a little more about. So um, in 2015, 190 nations, they decided that they had to take a stand on climate change. And they agreed that starting in 2020, they would try to have zero carbon emissions by the end of the mid 21st century. And then in 2017, President Trump pulled out. Okay. Um, and uh, I saw you picked a number of pictures. Well, how did you decide what pictures to put in the brochure? Well, we wanted powerful pictures that would really like make people reflect. So we have like your classic picture of like a polar bear on the melting like ice caps and stuff. And then we have nations agreeing at the Paris Climate Agreement, like all holding hands. We have pictures of carbon emissions. And then we have a picture of some of the members of TJ Talk. Mm -hmm. and, and so obviously you all care a lot about climate change. Um, what are, what's one fact about climate change that, that concerns you personally? I would definitely, like on a daily basis, I think about cars and how they're affecting climate change. That's something that affects me a lot. I always try to carpool and I take the school bus because I always think about how much I've driven that day and then try and like just multiply that by people in Amherst. And then if you try and think about how many people are driving in Massachusetts and the United States and then the world, then it's mm -hmm. huge. Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. And um, so, Anna, how did you, what, what involvement did you have about this whole process? Well, originally, m my partner for the project was a girl in my social class named Madeline, and we decided to make posters. Mm -hmm. But after we finished the posters, I still wanted to do more, so I joined the TJ Talk, and I started working with a few other people on researching facts and finding, like, pictures and facts to write with. Yeah. And, and what are some of the facts that were really compelling to you? Uh, the, I really thought the part about the ice was incredible because I have almost, in my family almost entirely lives on the seashore. And so one of my, my grandpa lives on an island. Mm -hmm. So it really was like really profound to me that since the ice caps were melting so rapidly and quickly that like me, some of the people in my family that I love a lot could be like their houses could be destroyed and his home's already been destroyed like four times. Because of storms? Right, right. So one of the factors that could be effects of climate change is much more, um, much stronger storms. And so have you been learning about that in school? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what have you, and, and convention, what, what have you been learning in terms of some of the effects of climate change? We've been learning about like Kiribati and islands like that where people have already started like migrating to different places where their homes won't be invaded by water coming up onto their island. Right. Right. And some island countries, in fact, are going to be just eliminated. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Anna, were you, you know, you were going to say other things about effects? Yeah, I was also going to say something about the islands. We are also learning that we watched a video about places like Kiribati, once again, in like the 1970s, they showed pictures of like the harbors and everyone looked so happy because they were like all getting into the harbors and like everything was nice and like there was a house, but it was like a few on the beach was far away from it. And now it shows like in 2017 or 2016, whenever the video was shown, th it was like the water was inside of the boat. And we're also learning about like the fresh water and things like the islands 
were surrounded by water, but like the little fresh water they gave that had was just flowing away. That's why you couldn't use tractors or stuff. So no fresh water means no one can live there eventually. Um, yes, and have you learned about um, how migration is a huge, p people having to flee their homes. Um, did you learn any, um, you're nodding, uh, Lucy, did you learn well, anything about that? Um, <clears throat> we learned a lot about people having to leave their homes and just forever or temporarily, but especially on Kiribati, they were talking about um, how people moving also caused problems because places were getting overpopulated and having poor sanitation because there weren't meant to be that many people living there. Right. Yes, yeah, so massive migration is going to be one effect of climate change, and that's going to affect the whole world. Um, yeah. Um, so, um, let's see. Um, a, uh, a lot of you mentioned, I, I gave you a, a sheet with some questions and ideas, and a lot of you mentioned that, uh, that there were ways that climate change should matter to, um, to everyone. Um, what are some of your thoughts on that? Um, anyone want to jump in? Or, uh, Jaden, you look like you might be about oh, to yeah. jump in. Yeah. So, wait, what was the question again? Yeah. Uh, it, um, why do you think climate change should matter to every child and well, adult? Right now, climate change is kind of just affecting some people, not really close to the U.S. Like, there's been a little bit of it happening in Florida with flooding, but right now especially here, it's kind of everybody else's problem. It's always something that happens to someone else. But that's just for a matter of time. Like, it's just, to some people, it's just happening in the islands or like down south or something, but it's eventually gonna affect everybody. And we have, we've had a couple of warm winters where snowfall comes a little late and it's starting to affect us. And give it a couple years and it will be affecting everybody. So we have to anticipate that and we have to plan ahead. Yes, definitely. Um, and uh, I also wanted to ask you, um, Jean, about yeah. uh, the town meeting process. What, what did you think about that? You were, you were, so yeah. some people were presenting and some people were up in the stands. Or in the back, were you in the, in the back watching the yes, process? Yes, I was in the back. Yeah, so tell me what it felt like to watch that. It felt so real because we had been spending months planning this and there was so much to do in the last week we were full of like deadlines and everything was happening and you know it, when it just came down to the moment it was crazy because yeah, it, it was like it was so real and it just occurred to me then it might not pass <laughs> and it was scary because it, I hadn't been expecting like it was just something that seemed so far away and then all of a sudden it was there. Yeah, yeah, and what did it, were you all? In the room, in one capacity or another? So what did it, had you ever seen town meeting before? No, no. so your first time there. And um, so um, Lucy, what did you think as you watched, um, what did you think of the whole process of seeing, you know, 200 some odd people, there's 240 town meeting members, but they're usually not every single one present, but it's a big group. What did you think of that? Well, I was really kind of, surprised because I don't really know what I expected but we're used to seeing all the kids in that auditorium uh -huh. and there was just a lot of adults and it was really organized but it was also kind of intimidating to have that organization and ev all these adults like looking at you and like listening. Right, right, right. So in fact this is your auditorium so you see it always with you and your classmates, and yet here we were all <laughs> in the room. Um, uh, what did the rest of you think of, of just that night? <coughs> um, well, I was up in the front talking mostly right. about it, and it was sort of scary, I guess, because um, like just everyone was looking at you, and it's not usually people that you recognize, but they're not really your classmates. Yeah. And so it was scary because you were thinking about making sure that you were reading the right words and talking clearly and loudly and you just wanted to make sure that it would pass. So yeah, and we'll, we'll take a clip yep, uh, at this moment to look at a part of your presentation at town meeting. Um, great. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, 
Anna and Jaden, what else did you see, think about how the process went when you, when the article was presented? Well, there was, it was kind of scary because as a lot of people know, like when you're doing a project and you've like worked so hard on it, you're worried that like there's going to be some tiny little thing that goes wrong and then the whole thing's going to unravel. And even though there was like, there might've been like, there was like one problem, Tessa and the Lani family kept on going strong through the thing, through the slideshow, even when like the clicker broke, even though it was like a slideshow broke. And it was like, it was also kind of scary to see like, to have like your work being projected in front of like 270, 200 odd people. Right. Your slides were right up there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like you can see like some stuff that you wrote and like some choices that you made and you're like, oh, that was good or oh no, that was really good. You should never do that again and, in a future reference. And what did you think about how it passed so fast, unanimously? What were your reactions? It was um, really rewarding because it all came down to that and I knew that some people were concerned about how it would affect Amherst and what steps Amherst would have to take. And so we knew that some people were wondering about that, so we were wondering if that was going to be a problem or not. Yeah. 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 Anna? Yeah, people weren't meeting, they were always people who, oh, right. well, how is this going to affect the taxpayers or how is this going to affect, how is this going to a affect like regular people? And I was worried that there were gonna be people who were going to ask those kinds of questions. Yeah. But then it just like, when it passed unanimously, everyone, I know that a lot of people near me just wanted to cheer, but we remembered that we had to like respect the customs of town meeting and there was no cheering, right. so. Right, and so you mentioned too that, so there were precinct meetings or leading up to, there, there were like meetings that happened all around town leading up to town meeting. How many, of, raise your hand if you were part of attending a precinct meeting to discuss this. Okay, great, and what was that like? We, people. we knew what to expect and a couple of us went to more than one but it was still scary because we're like first we have to handle this but after this is going to be town meeting so like it was kind of a good practice and it helped us know what we had to put in the script because people's questions helped us know what they wanted to find out about our article and so I think it was helpful. How do you feel like, uh, maybe just a sentence from each of you, how do you think being part of this process will affect you later in life? Or even like later in your school years? I think I'll definitely for the rest of my life think about climate change more and think about how even though problems might not affect us now, they will in the future. Um, I think by being a part of this, it helped me learn that um, uh, like everyone's part of this problem and you may think oh we're just some seventh graders from Amherst what what difference is this going to make I'll remember that even like even a couple of people coming together to try to help this is a big impact towards a bigger movement of helping solve things like climate change yeah right you're part of and young people can be part of a political process you can make a difference and you did uh, yeah, Jaden and Anna? Um, yeah, I think it gave me some experience about like more articles that also helped me learn about climate change. I think that it gave me experience like speaking in front of like large crowds if I ever have to do that again, or like public speaking, and I'll be able to do that because like the Warren article and there were like people that I didn't know, like Tessa said, so it gave me some experience doing that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm very curious to see what you all do later in life with your civic engagement. You did an excellent job. Thank you for being our first panel and excellent work. Thank you. Hello, we are here with our second panel from the seventh grade class. We're from climate change decision. And I'm gonna ask each uh, young person to introduce themselves and say what part of the process they participated in. We're also happy to have uh, Ms. Katerina Sherrick with us who is uh, was one of the teachers involved with the process, and you can also introduce yourself and say what part of the process you were part of, Ms. Sherrick. Um, okay, so uh, go ahead, uh, Leah. My name is Leah, and I attended precinct meetings, helped edit the script, and helped with the final presentation to town meeting. And what's your full name? Leah Newberger. 
I'm Eleanor Jacoby, and I did a lot of work editing the script and working on slideshows and stuff. Uh, I'm Cameron Grayley, and I initially uh, wrote the petition and also helped uh, increase its meetings. And full disclosure, I'm the biggest contributor. <laughs> He's my friend. And uh, you know, drove him around and helped collect signatures uh, to get this petition into town hall. social studies intern um, so I was there as a guide on the side throughout the whole process I helped students edit helped them practice their speeches attended precinct meetings and town meeting with them um, and really they were the stars of the show I was just there to help wonderful so um, so let's talk about the maybe chronologically what happened first and later and uh, so um, uh, the first thing was drafting the petition. So uh, Cameron, why don't you talk about what was it like to draft the petition and to collect signatures? And how did people respond when you were collecting signatures? Well, um, social studies class, we saw an example of a petition. And I said, well, I could do that. I found various facts about the Paris Climate Agreement as well as other climate change related facts. And I just put them onto paper and edited a little bit and then printed it out, made a few copies. Then uh, I went around door to door in our neighborhood, knocking, and then pe people, people were pretty positive about it. Um, a lot of people weren't home, but the people I did see, uh, none of them refused to sign it. We got a lot of signatures that way. And how did you done on a form from Town Hall? Did, yeah. did, uh, did, uh, and how many signatures did you need to get total? Uh, we needed to get 10 signatures total. Mm -hmm. I think we ended up getting 12 to 13. Did anyone who signed ask questions, and what did they ask? Um, I don't think anybody really asked questions. A few people said, oh, this is a very good thing you're doing. Okay. Um, great. And, and uh, Ms. Sherrick, uh, go ahead and, uh, what, what did, um, were you part, what part were you active in the, in the very beginning? Sure, so this whole process started as a project-based learning opportunity. Um, after watching An Inconvenient Truth and the sequel by Al Gore, students were really um, excited. Well, they weren't excited that they watched the films. They wanted to do something about what they saw. So they wanted to take some sort of environmental action on the environment or climate change. So I designed an assessment where they could take any action they wanted. Students wrote petitions. They created ad campaigns. Um, tried to develop workshops. Leah over here actually worked on an idea of developing a workshop to help people make solar powered phone chargers. Oh, I'm gonna ask you about that. So a they did a lot of amazing work and since students were interested in making petitions, um, we asked them to call town hall and see how that process worked. So students figured out the process on their own terms and on their own time. So um, how many of you were part of things that weren't actually this petition article, but were part of this whole unit on, on the environment? Uh, I guess you were, Leah. I, me and Skylar, we tried to create a solar-powered phone charge workshop. We never really got through with it because it was a lot of money, and we felt like we would have to raise money and then get, and we just thought it would just be a long process. And I wanted to join TJ Talk with the cup, so. Yeah. You know, you still learned, I guess, what goes into trying to do that other project. So even if it doesn't necessarily come to fruition, it sounds like you learned skills that later, if you do something like that, you'll know what, what the process is. Um, and, and how about you, um, Eleanor? Were you part of other parts of the unit? Uh, yeah, we like, I did, I'm in a group, I made a slideshow that we uh, were thinking of presenting to maybe the school or something. And uh, oh, it was, what was that on? Yeah. it was on like climate change and also what Amherst can do to like help it. And some of the slideshow actually ended up in the one we presented to town meeting. So, Terrific. yeah. So what, what part of the slide did town you meeting did you yeah. compose? Um, I did a lot of editing the slides in um, the first slide, um, like the intro and yeah. What was some of the content that you selected for slides? What what mattered to you? Um, things that like Amherst could do. Like I know my parents are always complaining about how there is no free recycling in Amherst. So 
uh, light bulb went off in my brain that maybe we should try to work on that and see if Amherst can get free recycling that might encourage people to recycle more. Yeah, that's a great idea. How did you think you might go about that? Um, I didn't do a lot of work on that in this project, but I think someday, like, I think it would be a good thing because recycling is good for the environment. And yeah. Um, and uh, Cameron, what, what facts did you think were most important that you included in the petition? Well, I uh, put in some stuff that uh, was significant about what was happen happening to the earth, like the uh, ice caps melting, sea levels rising. I also put in some stuff that um, other, other uh, communities had done to stand by nuclear power plants. Yeah. What, what are some of the specifics that you were looking at? Um, well, I think uh, there were there are many cities across the United States who uh, have chosen to stand by the Paris Climate Agreement, and uh, several in Massachusetts have as well. And uh, also, um, many many cities are also trying to uh, actually work toward toward becoming one hundred percent renewable energy or have zero carbon emissions. Mm -hmm. Like Burlington, yeah, Burlington, Burlington, Vermont. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, now, uh, so. The, this whole process with the petition article started off with collecting signatures, and then what did you do after you got the signatures, Cameron? Then we, um, where'd you bring them? Town Hall. Okay, and who'd you give it to? The neighbors, or uh, the what office? The um, select board office. Yeah, yeah. And then what happened? Well, then there were several deadlines. We had uh, to make a flyer, and uh, we also made a brochure. So um, I'm going to sh show uh, an ex the brochure, the sorry, the, the flyer that you made with the polar bear. It's shown now. Um, could you talk about why you chose to put a couple of those facts on the flyer? Well, we um, chose to put the polar bear on because they are significant. Um, they are significantly impacted by climate change, uh, by climate change and uh, the ice caps melting. How is that? Why? Why? What does the polar bear symbol mean? Well. Many polar bears are dying because their their home in the Arctic is being it is melting gradually. Um, since the the global temperature is rising, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the ice caps are melting and they're having to swim miles and miles. And yeah. Often they can't find anywhere else to live. They just keep swimming, looking for for food, but a lot of them die. Mm -hmm. Um. And uh, so you mentioned there were other dates, and um, what were some of the other dates and commitments that, that you all were part of? Um, well, for example, there's precinct meetings, um, which are meetings that happen in different sections of town. Um, raise your hand if you were part of attending a precinct meeting. Okay. And okay, great. Um, so, Leah, what was that like? It was definitely, it was not what I expected because. I feel like as a kid, especially at town meeting and precinct meetings, they always want you to like be on your best behavior and they're always worried about you like doing the wrong thing. But when I got there, it was like pretty casual. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't as like uptight as I expected. And could you describe it? What, um, because we, with town meeting uh, not going to be happening more, people won't necessarily know what a precinct meeting looks like. What did it look like? There was like a long, there was a big table and everyone had like binders and a pa I think there's like different articles on every page and they were all numbered. Yeah. So people would be like, let's talk about like 27 and people would all flip to 27 yeah. and everyone was really engaged. Yeah, yeah so, so um, basically everything that's talked about in town meeting is on something called a warrant and the warrant is all divided up by articles and so the precinct meetings will go article they don't necessarily cover all, in this case there were 39 articles, they didn't talk about every one, but they talked about the ones that people didn't deem either controversial or complicated. Um, and what happened when they came to your article? Um, we wanted to go first because we didn't want to sit through <laughs> the whole thing. So they moved but, you up. Um, yeah, it was, we had like a presentation, or not really, we read from a script. Yeah. And they seemed, they, they, no one really really was just amorous with people because they, we really didn't have any experiences with people who didn't want it to happen. Uh -huh. what, what were some of the comments people made? 
I think part of them were surprised by like nobody was really making comments, nobody had any questions. Okay. All right. right. And um, what uh, Eleanor, did you work on that script? Did you say? Uh, yeah, I did yeah. a bit of script work. Um, and, and what kinds of things did you feel was important to include in the script? Well, I felt like facts about the uh, climate change were important to include, like the evidence, and I felt it was really important to like get across all our ideas about climate change. One fact that you thought was compelling and one idea. Well, we included like um, about the Paris Climate Agreement. We included facts about how U.S. was like one of the three countries maybe that wasn't like part of it at the moment. So I think that was a really important fact that Amherst can still stand by the agreement even though the U.S. isn't part of it. Right. Cameron, you're nodding. What are the three countries? Do you uh, recall? It's, it's two countries. Uh, well, I mean, including the U.S. Three, but. Initially, um, Nicaragua and Syria didn't sign it, and now the uh, U.S. has withdrawn from it. Uh, we found this great uh, map that had uh, just all of the, the, the world was blue except for Syria and Nicaragua, and then there's the U.S. there who was that was also red. Um, and um, Eleanor, you mentioned part of what you wanted to include in the script was things to do. What was one thing you thought pe yeah. people should do? Um, definitely support the agreement and the recycling thing, and also like just do your part and like um you know just small things like remembering not to litter and like doing like do uh, renewable energy things like using solar panels on your house is a good idea i think mm -hmm. okay. great um and uh miss miss sherrick what uh how did this project uh relate to the other projects that were going on what were some of the other projects i understand solar so um, we are Team J and Team L, Team Lycanthrope, was working on making a green space at the school, I believe. They were inquiring about solar panels and making kind of an outdoor classroom space. So it seems like a lot of the seventh graders, not just on our team, really cared about the environment and it was part of that environment unit. Great, great. Um, so. I'm wondering how, uh, well, let, let's take the town meeting night. So um, were you all there? Yeah? Okay, so you, some of you were watching, and, and uh, there were three of you presenting. What was it, uh, let's take uh, Lee and Eleanor, what was it like to watch this uh, town meeting process? Well, there was a lot of nervous energy in, like, the room, and it just felt, in the end, it was a really positive experience because our article got passed, and I think we all felt really good about ourselves after it got passed. And also, I felt like the town meeting members were really supportive of us because, yeah. like, they clapped for us yeah. when it got passed. And it's usually not allowed. Oh. <laughs> so we, we felt really good about it. Yeah. That was terrific. And, um, Lee, what did you think? Um, well, again, we had to be really formal. And a lot of people at town meeting, like, the adults weren't. And we were always told, like, don't like slam your chairs or don't clap and all the adults were sort of just <laughs> doing it and meanwhile we had to like get the respect which I thought was interesting as a kid mm -hmm. and also I was doing the slide presentation mm -hmm. and that was like malfunctioning but there's like someone on the panel who was like helping us yeah so and several communities from the audience we didn't even know there was any malfunction so you carried it off very well <laughs> so and Cameron, you were one of the three presenters. What was that like? It was a it was a great experience. We had a we had a list of things we were going to say. We had the, the PowerPoint behind us. Um, we alternated what we were going to say. We talked about um, what the Paris Climate Agreement was. We talked about um, what happened to it, how President Trump withdrawing, and then we talked about next steps Amherst could do. And then eventually, when we were done, town meeting voted unanimously to pass our article. We're just going to take a moment and show a clip of what were some of the next steps that you mentioned in town meeting. Okay. Um, and um, Ms. Sheriff, what did you think about watching the town meeting process? Um, well, first of all, I was immensely proud of all the students w who were speaking, who were helping with the slideshow, who talked to a news reporter, and who were there to show support for their teammates. Um, everyone was very respectful, and the whole process of town meeting 
was amazing for the students to watch. It gave them an idea of how a town meeting government style works um, and exposes them to civic ideas which they can then carry forth and use for themselves growing up. That is so important. Now, I'd like to each give you give you each a, a moment to say a sentence about how this issue uh, affects or the being civically engaged matters either in a different political issue. I know some of you are involved in other political issues, um, or how you see this could be affecting your political involvement in later life. So take any one of those questions, and if you could say a sentence about that. Um, I think it's really important for kids to get involved. Like after all the gun control rallies and stuff that was happening, it's really kids who are pushing the movements now because it's like our generation is a really loud generation and we have things we want to say and we're like telling people like, no, you can't do that to us. And were you involved with the gun control yeah. activism yeah, that happened on campus? What was that march? There was, I think over um, social media, we organized a walkout at the school where someone told Miss Bodie and something happened and the whole school participated in that. And that was Against the violence in the schools, gun yeah. violence. Terrific, good job. Um, and uh, Eleanor, how do you think this could affect you in your life or other political issues that you care about? Yeah, a lot like Leah said, I think it's really important that our generation uh, is able to deal with these uh, situations because it is our future and I think our generation is really passionate about what happens. Great. And what, what do you think, in terms of what you learned with all this process, going to town meeting, preparing, um, what skills do you think you might use later on to be involved? Well, I think now I've gotten a lot more confidence and I now know a lot about how the government works, like town meeting, and it was really cool to like experience all this stuff. Yeah, what was the, what was one single thing that uh, you thought was most interesting that just you were like, wow, I didn't know that? Most interesting, probably, I liked how us as teenagers could like have a say in something, and I feel like it's really cool that we were able to get a article passed that now the whole town is following. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Cameron, what did you, how is this going to affect you in later life? I think I'll definitely remember this. I'll be very proud that, uh, that this happened. I, I, uh, I am very proud that it happened. I think it was, an, it was definitely uh, a very a, an interesting experience, and I really enjoyed going to town meeting. And, and, and what were, what's one of the most surprising things about the process that you encountered? Well, uh, I was surprised that uh, there was just uh, so much, uh, so so many interesting opportunities to participate in this process. Going to precinct meetings, uh, making flyers, speaking at town meeting. It just was a a very um, unique experience, and I, and I, I really, uh, really enjoyed it. Yeah, and were you surprised that there were no questions and no one said anything against your article <laughs> and there was just a quick unanimous vote? How did that feel? It was really very interesting. We prepared for something. I feel like it was much more high stakes because we were thinking it wasn't going to happen. We were also nervous, but we, we really didn't. We were preparing for people having questions and people opposing it. But I think we overthought it, and Amherst yeah. is a really great town to live in. And it's always good to be prepared for all those questions. Um, Ms. Sherrick, any last sentence? Sure. I think going forward, these students are going to have all of this knowledge about participating civically and about being environmentally friendly that they can spread wherever they go. Thank you. You did an awesome job, and thanks for being part of this panel. Thank you. Hello. We are here with a third panel from the TJ Talk Climate Action students. Um, for people who are newly tuning into the program, could someone say what TJ Talk actually means? Um, Ruan, you want to mention what it means? 
Well, TJ Talk is like the Team Jaguar Takes on Climate Change Committee, and we are basically a bunch of 12 and 13 year old seventh graders who are trying to get something done about climate change. Thanks, Ruan. And I'd like to just go down the row and everyone say what your full name is and what parts of this process did you participate in? What did you do? Um, I'm Ruan Elphawal, and I helped edit the script, and I talked at some of the pre one of the precinct meetings, and I talked at town meeting. And what script do you mean? The script that we were like going to be looking at at town meeting. Okay, great. So anyone who's presenting an article at town meeting, um, uh, it's called a motion. They move to pass this article, and then they have five minutes to address it. And so Ruan was part of the group of three that presented the resolution. So that was a great presentation, and um, let's go on to Grace. What part did you play in this process? Um, so my name is Grace Johnson. Um, a role that I played um, was getting involved and getting organized and making sure that like the slideshow and presenting at town meeting would be all done. Great. And uh, which slides did you find most interesting to work on? What did what was the content? Um, one slide or a few slides that I liked seeing and working on were like the ones about what you can do to solve climate change and just little things you can do about it. And what were some of the things that you could do to solve climate change? Some of the things were like plugging out um, electronics when you didn't need them plugged in or shutting off the lights when you weren't in a specific room. Right, so reducing our use of energy because the more we use energy, the more it contributes. Now how does that contribute to climate change? It contributes to climate change it makes emissions, CO2 emissions rise, and that is our atmosphere, and it's not good for us to breathe either, um, and it can lead to a lot of sickness. Okay, great. Um, okay, and Ariana, what was your, could you introduce yourself, and, and what was your role? Um, my name is Ariana Kasira Melendez. I helped edit the slideshows and part of the script. Okay, and um, which parts of the script or the slideshow did you find most compelling? That you were most interesting and important to you? It was the parts like, like the, you know, like hurricanes, mm -hmm. the electricity. And how are hurricanes related to climate change? It hurts, well, it hurts the environment, like water, Food. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Rowan, did you want to jump in? And hurricanes, like they get more severe and are like get like more often when the ocean water is like hotter. Right. So, so worldwide, we're seeing a huge increase in in really strong storms and hurricanes. Sometimes hurricanes where they haven't had them before. So you're right. That's a really important point. Um, and uh, so, Dr. LaRoche, um, could you introduce yourself? about um, you actually you have a unique role because you are uh, looking not just at this particular action but many actions working on the environment could you talk a little bit about the whole big picture sure I can um, so my name is Irene LaRoche thanks for talking with me today um, I am the social studies teacher and um, it's been my privilege and honor to work with all of these students about uh, the issues that they are interested in uh, our unit began with an environmental focus um, in general looking at how humans impact the environment and how the environment impacts humans. Um, and we looked at oil producing countries. Um, we looked at climate change and as we were looking at climate change, the students really felt um, compelled to move, to take action. And um, so we talked about what they wanted to do and created an assessment that allowed them to make plans to take action. And students did a variety of actions. Some of them wanted to do a poster campaign. Uh, some students planned for um, a tree planting day in town. Uh, a couple of students were looking at trying to figure out how to um, create solar um, uh, cell phone chargers. And they wanted to actually present that to other students and teach them how to do it. So there was a variety. Um, and a lot of uh, the study, um, the students were really questioning why adults weren't taking action. And um, in particular, they were um, dismayed by the fact that the United States was no longer part of the Paris Climate Agreement. And 
that drove them to say, well, is Amherst, what's Amherst doing? You know, what's, what's Massachusetts doing? And so looking at um, the fact that Massachusetts had decided to um, support the agreement, they wondered, okay, what about Amherst? Um, so lots of different projects. Um, a lot of them are still ongoing. Uh, there is another team that, um, Team Lycanthrope, has a group of students who've presented to the um, school to look at solar panels for the middle school roof. Um, so lots of different actions and just really following where our students need us to go. And that's my job was to support them. And I understand this, this interest in civic engagement is not new for you. And uh, when we talked before, you mentioned you were part of uh, the eighth graders had brought a resolution to town meeting and you were part of the support of that. Could you mention what that was? Sure. I mean, I think that um, the department, the social studies department, the school in general, and the district has an interest in civic engagement. Um, and, uh, and our school certainly has an interest in social justice as well. So for a number of years, we've been teaching in our eighth grade, um, we've been teaching an inquiry unit where we look at the portrayal of Columbus. Um, and um, also at times um, our, our students have looked at Jeffrey Amherst um, and these students will hopefully do that with me next year. Um, and so again, really putting these um, concepts out there, putting the, the, the information out there for students to digest and decide what they think about, what they believe, draw conclusions, and then decide if they want to take action. So for a number of years, the, the unit on Columbus had happened in our district and in our school. Um, one year under Matthew Venditti, um, one of the social studies teachers um, who's no longer at our school but was here working with us, uh, those students decided they wanted to move. Just like this year, these students wanted to talk about climate change. So um, he was able to work with them, and again, it was really student driven um, to support them to bring their proposal to town meeting about Indigenous Peoples Day. And so they brought a successful petition article that legally changed the title of Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day in town meeting. That's a huge thing yes. and legally binding forever. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, okay, so how did you all feel about this whole process? Um, th there were many stages. Uh, some of you were active with what they call precinct meetings, the meetings leading up to town meeting. Raise your hand if you were part of those meetings. Okay, Ruan was, yeah. What was that like, Ruan, being part of the precinct meetings? Well, we, we just like went to multiple precinct meetings and talked about like climate change so we can like let people know before we went actually went to the town meeting. Was it was it surprising? Did they how did the so these precinct meetings have town meeting members there who are learning about the, the, the issues that come before town meeting. Did they ask you questions? Were they supportive? Well, what? It was like how many people actually supported us. I didn't think that there were adults out there who actually cared because lots of us. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but how could you tell these precinct meetings that they really cared? Like everyone was like, oh, they was asking us questions and they're actually engaged. They weren't like, oh, here are some middle school kids and they, they, they actually cared about like what we yeah. had to say. And what were one or two of the questions? Do you remember? Oh, like one of them asked us like, I think one of them asked us, well, why, do you, why did you care about it? Mm -hmm. And we told them, like, we cared because, um, like, we wanted all the new generations to have, like, the earth and have it, like, a couple generations back at it and not have it, like, dying out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. You, you, the planet needs yeah. to be a healthy planet for, for your generation and for, for the generations to come. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Let's talk about, um, oh, in terms of, you did slides too, right, Grace? Mm -hmm. Is that, um, what's something you learned from, uh, from the parts that you worked on? And I'll, I'll ask you the, the same thing, Ariana. What's something you learned from this process? Um, one thing that I learned, just not about learning about climate change, but working together as one community, especially with the students, um, I think that we were all collaborative and we could understand everybody's different viewpoints, not just the students, but how like different adults out there, like their viewpoints from learning. Um, one thing I did learn um, about the climate change thing was about the CO2 emissions, learning it in social studies, learning it in science, and then putting it all into a slideshow and all of us working together, it really was like a big thing and I could understand it a lot better. Yeah, and what's something that you understood better? What specifics about um, it? I understood better about the CO2 emissions and about how they do affect us and how which ways they do affect us. Mm -hmm. 
Like what? What are one of the effects? Um, one effect is like you can get very sick from it, or in some places you can get very sick because of the pollution that is made. Um, and we just wanted to spread that across because we think it's very important. Like what Juan was saying about future generations, we don't want them still living in this kind of hole or like ditch we're still living in. We want them to have a bright green future. Sure, great. Ariane, what, what did you learn from this? That Puerto Rico is a hurricane. Um, it happened, it hits hard, and the, the food, like they need food, the water, yeah. Mm, shelter. They, in fact, Harvard just did a study about the impact of that hurricane. In fact, um, over a thousand people were were killed in that hurricane, or as a result of the hurricane. Were you going to say something else? Before? I mean, I mean, a bunch of, like something else that we learned is that um, it w I think we all, most of us learned, at least I can say for myself, how to work better in bigger groups. Yeah. And how to like get like some big with a bunch of people how the all the people in behind the scenes matter not only the people who come to the town meeting let's talk about the town meet the night of town meeting raise your hand if you were in the room okay we were all there though you, so you were there in some capacity some were watching some were were up front um tell me one thing that either surprised you or you thought was really interesting or great about town meeting what's one share one memory with one thing that surprised me was that that vote was unanimous. Unanimous? And so fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there were no questions. I, I feel like that we explained it pretty well. That's a tribute to you all. You did an awesome job. Yeah, great. And Grace, what, what, what about you? Um, when I heard about how town meeting went, I was very surprised when like Dr. LaRoche told us about how there were no questions and it was just like a snap of a finger and they passed it. And I was very surprised because a lot of adults who were voting, I was like questioning like why didn't they ask, like I would have been surprised, like why didn't they ask questions because of like some people don't believe in climate change or some people don't want to help it, especially adults. And I was like, I was surprised. And then when I heard that like it was just very quick, I was like, that must have been that it went very well, it went very smoothly, and that the students that presented represented the school and like the community very well. I think that's absolutely right. Yeah, and Ariana, what did you think? About um, the when I, uh, one part that I was really surprised in was when the vote was unanimous, like Juan said, and um, that yeah, I was asking myself like Grace said um, that why didn't they ask question especially because students did it not like adults well and in fact you were respected like adults in fact you presented just as well as any adult would have um and, uh dr laroche what about you that night what what, what were share a couple of your memories that, that stood out to you uh so w i i actually have a funny memory um because you know, I, I think I love middle school students. I believe in middle school students. That's why I've been teaching them for 20 years. But um, not everyone in society appreciates an adolescent. Um, and so we really were talking about how can we represent our best selves. The students said, we should dress up. And so they you know, spread the word to each other, OK, here's what you need to do. And we should be early. Um, and one of the things that we said was, when you stand up, and the students told me this, I didn't realize this, but when you stand up, um, hold on to the seat, because if you stand up too quickly, it'll flip and make a lot of noise. Ooh. And um, so the, the students did it really well, but their parents, after they presented, a number of them stood up quickly, and, and they all laughed <laughs> quietly because the, the chairs all made a lot of noise. Right. <laughs> so they did better than our parents did. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, they just, it was beautiful to watch them supporting each other and uh, you know being interviewed for the newspaper and then speaking in front of a room full of people with cameras and microphones. Um, it all came together, you know, and they're still taking action. They were just, these three were just planning, a, a designing a t-shirt while we were waiting our turn to be interviewed. Oh, Let's terrific. They're just coming together, okay. And their col the collaboration was powerful and I think that they, have really um, shown what you could take 30 people and actually work together with yeah. all those different strengths. And uh, it's and really wonderful. And so how many people were, was it 30 that were actually involved with this whole process? There were 30. It's distributed over four different classes. Wow. 32. And um, 32 in the end. We had a couple who, who joined us and we did a presentation for the school. 
Terrific. So Terrific. Um, his was an expanded presentation that included a couple other folks. So yeah. Great. Now this T-shirt. What's it going to be? What's this? That's. What's it going to say? Well, it's still. We're, we're still planning it, but we're we were thinking of like having something that says like Team Jaguar Kids on Climate Change on the front with a picture of the Earth, and on the back having the Team Jag one of the Team Jaguar like logos thing. Great. And great. All the people that were part of the, the 32 people and the teachers. Having signing it or at least printed it <laughs> around it. It's a great idea. Great. And then this t shirt would be green. Awesome. Well, that's just great. Now, um, so I'm curious to know are you, you all did such an excellent job, and, and I heard from many people in town meeting just how articulate you were and how impressed they were with your, your presentation. And every step of the way, you, you came to all the dates, you, you were always well prepared. How do you think this is going to affect you later on? What, what skills did you take from this? Um, or, well, I'll give you, a, you can answer any one of these questions. One is like, how would this affect you later? What other political issues do you see that you might apply some of these skills to? Um, or what would you like people watching um, Amherst Media uh, to take from, what, from this petition that you did or other political actions you've been involved with? So any questions, but pick one of them that you'd like to address in this race. For a, a sentence or two. Well, we wanted them, the people who are watching Amherst Media right now, um, to know that we're asking them to help us. Um, like, they can help by doing like s the small things, like eating less meat, um, turning the heat down two degrees, um, turning the water and lights off when you're not using them, and like you can also plant a tree, which helps a lot. So. Concrete things, yeah. Um, what else? One thing that I learned, um, and I will take on for like myself, is like that sometimes when you work in a big group, yes, you might think at first, oh, it's going to be so frustrating, it's going to be hard, but then once you know that everybody's in for like one main thing, and you're all going to work together, and you're collaborative, you know it's going to work out. I think that's one thing I'll take on the road with me. Like I'll be able to do that. Um, one thing that I would like to like work on is like women's rights, and I would definitely take my experience with this and work on it. That's great to hear. And what part of women's rights interests you the most? Um, one thing that interests me the most about women's rights is just that sometimes we're not equal with like men, especially we're not equal with like pay or um, taking time off. Usually they're always in charge. So taking like a lead in something would be a great experience. That would be great. I, I see a, a career in women's rights ahead of you perhaps. <laughs> um, okay, and Ariana, what did you learn from this? Well, for the video I would like people to help us with climate change. Yeah, yeah. And, and 10 years from now, what do you think you're going to remember about this? Like some some of the, you know, who said what or exactly what you did, you might not remember in 10 or 20 years. But what's something, Ariana, you think even 20 years from now, you're going to be like, oh yeah, I remember. What, what's something you'll remember from this whole process? Uh, big town meeting. Yeah. It was big. So <laughs> describe to me what that felt like and what, what did that look like to you? Well at first it was for me it was a little scary because there was a lot of adults and it was just us in the back and Rowan and Cameron and Tessa mm -hmm. they were all speaking. Yeah. yeah so it felt a little intimidating. But in fact you were part of the political process. Even you got brought in because one of the speakers recognized you, so you all waved up in the stands. <laughs> um, and um, well, we're gonna we're gonna close up. But um, any uh, final comment on uh, on? Uh, actually, maybe I'll give you the final word, Dr. LaRoche, since you make this all made this all happen. Oh well, so my final word is I just followed where the students took me. I, I don't actually think that it was me that made it happen. I just. That's absolutely right, and I should I I stand corrected. <laughs> right, it's a, a teacher who lets the students take the leadership. That's what I saw, and you folks really did take the leadership, and 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 the project really was your own creation, and so successful, and and the whole town learned from you, and uh, good luck, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.